Why don't you tell our fellow human beings about that cure you use? Oh, that? Well, it's very simple, very simple, and it works every time. And for the same reason that that stuff I used to peddle at the circus worked. Because the people who bought it had faith in it. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, folks. Right this way, right this way. Come up a little closer now, come up a little closer. I have here in my hand a bottle of that marvelous tonic, a complete cure, a sure cure, the only cure for the dread disease called mentalitis. It results. You will notice that it is prescribed by the famous Dr. McIntyre and that the patient should take at least two large glasses full before and after each meal or any other time of day he feels the urge. There is an old adage in medicine, use the new treatments while they still work. Over the last century, a catalog of effects has been developed, and any educational researcher looking into the pedagogical impact of innovative methods such as games needs to be on the lookout for these. Expectancy, demand, achieving in proportion to what is expected, the Pygmalion or false feedback effect, responding to teacher attention, novelty, the arousal effect of unfamiliar stimuli, the Barnum effect or fortune teller effect, generic motherhood sort of feedback likely to be true for anyone. The John Henry effect, challenge to outperform a machine or a standard. The placebo and sugar pill, positive response to a neutral treatment. A nocebo or a negative placebo is a negative reaction to ostracism, like pointing the bone. The Hawthorne effect, responding to experiment, social cohesion, teamwork. Intermittent reinforcement, responding more strongly to random rather than regular rewards. Cognitive dissonance and reactance, responding more strongly to token rather than substantial rewards. Intrinsic motivation, performing for moral inducement rather than economic reward. The placebo effect is prestigious, compelling intellectual and emotional investments, elaborate, detailed, expensive, time-consuming, fashionable, esoteric, and dangerous. Such a description certainly fits computer games and their evangelists. In practice, we don't have to memorize this list. When you add them all together, we know that there is a decay function for placebo and Hawthorne effects on educational innovations to wear off, i.e., they reach a peak improvement of half of one standard deviation, then fade to a third of a standard deviation within five to eight weeks, then by the eight-week mark, they only account for one percent of the variance a gain of a half standard deviation is considered quite respectable in terms of educational interventions. This is nothing unique to education. Medicine has long learned to value the placebo. Indeed, the director of the Division of Mental Health of the World Health Organization reminded us that in most treatment, pharmacological substances and most other non-placebos are only adjuncts to the treatment process. In medicine, individual patient differences, such as placebo effects, only account for 35 to 50 percent of treatment variance. In education, individual student differences have been found to account for 50 to 80 percent of variance. For homework, think of how you would level the playing field for a traditional method by adding placebo effects. What might you do to make it fashionable and esoteric? This tonic is absolutely free. Its supply is unlimited. You can get it at any water fountain. It's the faith you have in it that does the job. In fact, you don't even need the water. Just set this empty bottle on your desk and think about it every day. 